Hello friends, welcome to this Facebook live session of Indira Gandhi National Open University. I, Dr. Niradhar De, faculty member, School of Education, IGNU New Delhi, welcome you all on my personal behalf and on behalf of my school, that is School of Education, IGNU. Friends, today we are going to discuss one of the very important course of IGNU B8 program. Uh, the course code is BES127 and course title is Assessment for Learning. Friends, you know, just to recapitulate, uh, in this month, in the December 2020, already we have discussed two courses of IGNU B8 program, a detailed introduction of two courses. That is, first uh, we had started our discussion, that is on the course BES122, that is Contemporary India and Education. And further, we have discussed another course that is BES 125, Understanding Disciplines and Subjects. Uh, friends, today, uh, the earlier two courses that is BES 122 and BES 125 was the core course of IGNU B. Ed. program. And this course, today that we are going to discuss, that is BES 127, Assessment for Learning. This is the core course of IGNU B. Ed. program that is included in the second year of this program. So friends, let us discuss about uh, the course component, the structure and uh, what are the major content point, major concept that has been addressed in this course. So before uh, going to you know detail about this course, let me to uh, highlight upon some of the important aspect of IGNU B. Ed. program. As you know, uh, the Bachelor of Education program of Indira Gandhi National Open University that has been developed as per the NCTE regulations 2014-2014. Uh, as you know, NCT is the regulatory body of teach Indian teacher education programs, different programs like DLED, B.Ed and M.Ed. So as per the NCT regulations 2014, IGNU has developed uh, its course, its B.Ed co program and this has been launched since July 2016 across India. And uh, let me to say, if you will go through the very concept, the very philosophy, the fundamental philosophy of NCT's new regulation, that is NCT regulation 2014, so far as different teacher education program is concerned, you will find that uh, uh, you know, uh, a constructivist approach that has been highly approached, uh, highly used for designing the curriculum for uh, uh, you can say framing different courses of the teacher education program. Mm -hmm. So accordingly you will find the B.Ed. program which is developed by Indira Gandhi National Open University that has been designed and that has been developed as per the constructivist approach of teaching learning process. And uh, you know B.Ed. is a teacher education program, is a professional program, is a skill oriented program and it prepares teachers, okay, rigorously it involves teachers. Uh, in different skill based activities okay uh, 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 you know uh, this program acquaint the learners uh, to use pedagogy for uh, transacting school curriculum so that's why you will find that this program bachelor of education program is a combination of theory practical and skill oriented courses further we will discuss that uh, what are the uh, theory courses are there for developing a type of theoretical construct among the trainee teacher, among the learners and then after uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the practical and skill oriented courses just like the pedagogy courses at the same time other uh, skill oriented practical courses are there for providing a detailed understanding and for developing a detailed skill which a teacher requires for teaching in, for teaching in the class. So friends, uh, uh, further let me to say that uh, this program, this B.Ed. program prepares teachers to teach at the secondary stage in school curriculum, in school education. As you know, as per the NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020, now the pedagogical curricular structure in school education, that is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system of education, that means 5 years of foundational stage of education, then for the three years of uh, preparatory stage of education, then again three years of middle stage of education, then the last four year is of secondary stage of education. That means uh, uh, the four year of secondary education that caters 
class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. So, uh, uh, you know, the learners, the trainee teachers who will pursue this B.Ed program, they will eligible to teach uh, to the students who are studying in class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. Further, uh, uh, let us go forward to uh, discuss some of the other important aspect, other important point, certain general point relating to this B.Ed program which is uh, developed by Indira Gandhi National Open University. First of all, uh, I think you all know the eligibility as per the NCT regulation uh, 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 <coughs> 2014. Uh, so far as the eligibility to take admission in ODL B.Ed program is there, Open and Distance Learning System B.Ed program is there. The eligibility is at least 50 percent marks either in the bachelor's degree and or in the master's degree in sciences, social, uh, uh, social sciences commerce and different humanities discipline. Apart from this, uh, you know, the candidates, they are supposed to be trained, uh, they are supposed to be a trained in service teachers in elementary education means who are working in different schools of elementary education. Uh, that means that is from class 1 to class 8. Then further, the candidates who have completed a NCT recognized teacher education program through face to face mode. So, you should understand that as per the NCT regulation for the ODL B.Ed program, uh, you will find that uh, that group of learners, that group of candidates will eligible who has earlier pursued uh, a type of certificate program or a type of diploma program just like diploma in elementary education or diploma in education uh, which they have done, which they have completed uh, as per the recognition of NCT means that program must have recognized by the NCT and one should complete it, uh, it in a face to face in a conventional system in a regular mode. Then further uh, after eligibility let me to uh, uh, just touch upon some of the other points just like the total credit of the program is of 72. Uh, the learners they have to pursue 36 credits they have to earn 36 credits uh, in the first year of this program and again. 36 credits in the second year of this program. As you know, as per NCT regulation 2014, the B.Ed program uh, in ODL as well as in face to face mode is now 2 years. So, that is why in IGNU ODL B.Ed program, the learners have to uh, you know study 72 credits in uh, 2 years, uh, first year 36 credits and uh, second year they have to study different courses of 36 credits. And uh, the minimum duration of the program is of 2 years and maximum duration is of 5 years. So, my request uh, will be to all our learners, prospective learners who wants to pursue B.Ed uh, uh, in IGNU, uh, they should complete it within the minimum duration of the time that is 2 years, okay. But uh, as per the provision, uh, as per the system of Indira Gandhi National Open University, they will get maximum 5 years uh, to complete uh, this program. Then this program, the Bachelor of Education program is offered in the January session of every year. Uh, this says the revised B.Ed program has launched in the July session of 2016 and then after this has been launched once in a year that is uh, 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 in the January session of every year and medium of instruction of this program uh, that is both in English and Hindi. You will find that uh, the course material, uh, uh, the program guide and handbook of practical activities. Okay. Uh, and the other skill based manuals that has been developed both in English as well as in Hindi. So, further uh, just to give uh, uh, an overview about uh, different component of the courses in the first year of this program and second year of this program. You see now it is uh, visible on your, on, uh, on your screen that in the first year of this B.Ed program, uh, the learners have to study 36 credits. And uh, uh, the courses they have to study uh, that has been arranged, that has been designed in five different components, five different areas. Just like first is they have to study core courses, that is five courses under this category, under this category of core courses which is compulsory in nature and 16 credit course they will study. And the second category or second component that is content based methodology courses, they have to study two courses which is optional in nature and each course is having 4 credit weightage. So, total 8 credits they have to study from the content based methodology courses. 
and further as i have uh, already said that uh, this beard program has beautifully designed beautifully planned and beautifully implemented and you will find that uh, a rigorous theoretical construct at the same time practical based skill based uh, orientation and skill based uh, you can say experience the learners will get, will get they will develop certain skills so that's why uh, uh, the practical and skill based component is concerned uh, in the first year of this program uh, uh, 12 days face to face workshop that has been kept uh, uh, in this program which is compulsory in nature and that will be conducted at the study center at the study center level uh, of this program and the credit weightage to workshop one that is 12 days face to face uh, rigorous inter uh, interaction of the learners at the study center that is a four credit. Then further the learners they have to pursue two EPC courses this is also type of a practical course that is enhancing professional capacities EPC one and EPC two two courses they have to study in the first year of this program and each EPC course is of two credit weightage. So total four credit they have to cover from these two EPC courses. Then further four weeks internship program that has also been included in the first year of this program. So here complete one month that is four weeks the learners uh, they are supposed to go to a school and they will involve themselves in different school based activities. Okay, They will observe the things uh, and uh, uh, they will also take the leadership to organize different activities in the schools. Okay, So they will get a detailed experience that what is going on in the school. They will conduct a type of action research and they will also prepare a report and all these reports they are supposed to submit uh, at the uh, uh, program study center and that will be further evaluated. So friends internship one is of four weeks duration that is one month and credit weightage is of four. So total 36 credits they have to study uh, in the first year of this program from five different component of the courses. Then further go forward to discuss about that what are the different course components are there in the second year of this program. So as I have already said that in the second year of this B.Ed program the learners they have to study again 36 credits the total credit is of 70, uh, 72, 36 credits they have to study in the first year and 36 credits they have to study in the second year. In the second year again they have to study four core courses which is compulsory in nature and total credit is of 12. Okay. Uh, then further they have to study one optional course. Okay. So you will find that a pool of optional courses that has been included that has been kept uh, in this program in this B8 program and among the uh, you can list of optional courses the pool of optional courses the learners have to select only one course okay, and they have to study it and weightage is of 4 credit. Then so far as practical and skill based courses are uh, concerned here 3 component of courses that has been kept in the second year of this program just like workshop 2, workshop 1 uh, you know, they have to study in the first year and workshop 2 uh, the learners they have to study in the second year of this program. So here this is also 12 days face to face uh, interaction that will be conducted at the program study center which is compulsory in nature and credit weightage is of 4. Then further EPC 3 and 4 enhancing professional capacities this is also a practical oriented a skill oriented course. So two courses they have to study in the second year that is EPC 3 and EPC 4. Each EPC is of two credit weightage so total four credits they have to study from the EPC. Then further the rigorous uh, internship activities that will be conducted in the second year of this program. So that is why here uh, you see a 16 weeks 16 weeks internship program that has been kept that has been included in this program means complete four months the learners the trainee teachers they are supposed to spend in different schools they will teach to the students they will observe the teaching at the same time uh, they will also involve themselves in different activities they will take the leadership for conducting different activities they will do the action research they will uh, take the leadership of school assembly and uh, just like uh, a full fledged teacher they will involve themselves, they will engage themselves for acquiring different skills which is going on and which is conducted in the school. So that is why four months complete internship they have to, they have to uh, conduct and they have to pursue uh, in different schools. Okay. So and the weightage to internship to is of 12. So accordingly if I will include all the credits 
of five different courses that has been kept in the second year of this program that is of some total 36 credits so friends this is the uh, 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 brief program structure of first year and second year uh, of this B.Ed program and today we are going to discuss one of the course uh, which as a faculty I have coordinated this course earlier two courses I have coordinated BES 122, BES 125 in the first year of uh, B.Ed program and in the second year of this B.Ed program this course that is BES 127 assessment for learning which is a four credit course. Uh, this is also, uh, I have also coordinated this course. So, today we are going to discuss the detailed objectives and other aspects, other content point of this course, specifically this course. So, before discussing assessment for, uh, for learning, let me to just go through that what are the other different core courses that has been included which is compulsory in, in nature in the second year of this program, of this B.Ed program. Just like BES 1 to 6 knowledge and curriculum is a beautiful course that is of 4 credit weightage. Then BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning, this is also a very good course as per the new concept and pedagogical, uh, you can say structure, pedagogical approach of assessment is concerned to practice in the, uh, in the schools for transacting school curriculum. You will find that uh, this course has designed very well, this is a 4 credit course. Then BES 1 to 8 creating an inclusive school, that is a 2 credit course. And further you have to study BES 1 to 9 that is gender, school and society. This is also a two credit course. So total 16 credit course uh, um, that is the core course you have to study in the second year of this program. And friends now let us discuss uh, uh, the very objectives of the second course that is BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning. Uh, so uh, before discussing the objectives let me to say that we have developed uh, very good uh, learning material, self-learning material uh, in this course assessment for learning that has been uh, designed in four different blocks uh, which is now visible on your school, uh, on your screen and uh, let me to show you these are the four different blocks now you can uh, which is visible on your, uh, on your screen block 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you have already admitted uh, uh, in the B.Ed program, if you are inducted, you must have received this course material and uh, if you have not received this course material, then please go through the e course portal, e course portal of IGNU website. All the soft copy of the material both in English and Hindi languages, you will get it from our e course portal and uh, this is also available in IGNU students app. Okay. So, uh, uh, in mobile also you can access. Uh, uh, you know uh, these materials and whenever uh, you feel free to read the materials please go through these blocks and uh, go through the units and contents uh, that has been included in the course. So friends let us go forward to discuss about the objective of this course BES 1 to 7 assessment for learning. So friends as you know I have already said that uh, uh, the teacher education curriculum which is which is uh, you know, as per the NCT regulations 2014 uh, for ODL and face to face mode also, you will find that the entire curriculum that has been developed keeping in consideration of the uh, present pedagogy, keeping in cons uh, consideration of uh, you know the pedagogy that we are uh, presently using, currently using in the teaching learning process in our, in our school system. That is you can say the constructivist approach of teaching and learning process. That means uh, you will find that uh, the entire curriculum that has been developed uh, keeping in consideration the trainee teachers, keeping in consideration the learners at the center. Okay? Because, because uh, all the learning activities, all the uh, learning experiences, the learners that you will get, you will find that uh, this has been designed the content point as well as the practical and skill based activities that has been kept uh, focusing on the learners that they have to develop such skills and further they have to use, they have to implement those skills when they will be a full-fledged teacher. So friends, when we talk about, uh, you know, a cons uh, for the use of constructivist approach, this is not only to develop the material, that is also uh, how to use the constructivist approach uh, in assessment also. So friends, we consider that assessment is an integrated part, is an inclusive part 
of every uh, of any teaching learning process. So, whenever there is a teaching, whenever there is an interaction, whenever there is a type of deliberation in the classroom, you will find that discussions is going on, question answer is going on, uh, teacher is attending students queries, teacher is explaining certain things, narrating certain things, involving students in peer activities, in group activities. At the same time, teacher is observing the students also, what is going on in the school and what type of assessment strategies that are supposed to be adopted. So, friends, let me to say that if you will go through the earlier concept of assessment, which was, uh, you know, uh, uh, which was used in the earlier teacher education programs, you will find that uh, the assessment was uh, mostly based upon the summative uh, assessment or summative evaluation. Okay. So, means the continuous assessment was more or less uh, getting neglected earlier time, but, but in the constructivist uh, approach of teaching learning process, you will find that yes, teaching learning process uh, uh, will, uh, you know, the teacher will follow different methods, different techniques at the same time, teacher will also engage themselves uh, for assessing the performance of the learners by observation and by using other constructivist approach. Okay. So, friends, so, here let us try to discuss that what are the different uh, aspects that has been included in this course so far as for designing this course is concerned and to make assessment constructivist approach oriented. So, first of all, uh, you know this course will uh, uh, help the learners to understand the critical role of assessment in enhancing learning. Try to understand the critical role of assessment, what is the role of assessment role of assessment is not only to satisfy the learners, which is possible uh, you can say a type of summative types of evaluation, but here we are focusing upon the formative evaluation, the continuous assessment, continuous and comprehensive assessment, okay. Daily assessments, teacher will involve in the process of teaching and learning and teacher will assess the learners engagement, how the learners are uh, engaged themselves in the process of learning. So, that is why here. Uh, this is understood uh, uh, by this approach of, con by this constructivist approach that uh, the assessment practices that should help the learner for enhancing their learning, not only to assess their learning, okay. That means certain assessment practices, certain assessment techniques, methods will be followed and that assessment technique, that assessment method will help the learner to enhance their learning, okay, to learn more and more to get the feedback then accordingly to improve themselves, to modify them themselves and to understand the new facts, new principles, okay, the new ideas, new facts, new interactions which is or you can say the new concept which is addressed in the curriculum. So, assessment should have that power to, to engage the learners for enhancing their learning, okay, not only to assess that what they, what they have learned, what they have not learned they will also get an idea. So, this is one of the objective for designing this course. Then further other objective that has been addressed that is to understand the constructivist paradigm of assessment used in the teaching learning situations. So, what I was talking earlier as per the Vygotsky and uh, other psychologist you will find that uh, now across the globe, across the world in different teacher education program of other country you will find that highly the constructivist approach that has been used means means how uh, teaching learning process uh, will design that will help the learner to construct their own learning and to assess themselves also that we as a teacher not always engage ourselves to assess uh, you can say the behavior assess the performance assess uh, you can say uh, the content engagement of the learners rather to create such an environment to create uh, such a culture, such an academic culture in the classroom and in the school so that the students will able enough to understand that what they have learned, what they have understood and what they have not understood. Okay. So, what is their weak points, what is their strong points and what is their weak points. So, that is why uh, taking the feedbacks, taking the comments of the students, the learners will assess themselves that is called as the self-assessment. So, that is why friends here you will find that so far as the constructivist teaching learning process is concerned, constructivist approach is concerned, 
you will find that many techniques that has been suggested in NCT regulation 2014 and that has been successfully implemented in IGNO BEAD program. Okay. So, you will find that how to use inquiry based learning, how to use uh, you can say project based learning. So, such problem based learning. So, such type of concept that has been addressed in this program and for designing this course BES 1 to 7 you will find that every activity, every content point, every assessment technique, assessment, um, assessment tool that has been developed in a very constructivist approach to empower the learners to understand about their weaknesses and where they are okay and what further they have to do okay so friends this is another objective and the other objective for designing this course that is to understand the concept of assessment as an ongoing process of development of learning but not an end teaching activity so friends try to understand here three two things are given importance that to understand the concept of assessment as an ongoing process i was talking earlier that how to give importance much importance upon the continuous comprehensive assessment the formative assessment means assessment is, is, is an ongoing process assessment is a continuous process there is no end of assessment so when there is a teaching learning process then definitely the, there is assessment it is not like that you completed one session you completed one semester and then after you will appear for a, a type of torment torment examination yes definitely torment examination is there in our uh, uh, academic programs but at the same time every day what the teacher observe in the class what the students are doing when they are uh, doing certain activities within the group within the peer that's supposed to be observed and that's supposed to be assessed so that's why here assessment is considered as an ongoing process of development of learning but not an end teaching okay so end teaching assessment is definitely there but at the same time to re to reach at the uh, end teaching activity okay so every day assessment every chapter wise assessment every unit wise assessment is also given much importance so far as the course is concerned so this is another important objective then further this course is developed the another objective that is to understand the understand the assessment and evaluation approaches used in the teaching learning situation so what are the different approaches that has been used we talk about we talk about uh, uh, you can say placement evaluation we talk about uh, formative evaluation we talk about di diagnostic evaluation we talk about uh, summative evaluation when i will discuss in the next program about different units different blocks uh, of this program then uh, of this course then we will discuss detail about it but 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 different approaches that is also discussed uh, in this course then further objective is to uh, the course will acquaint the learners with current trends and practices of educational evaluation that what are the uh, current trends so far as assessment and evaluation is concerned maybe question uh, maybe a question bank how to prepare it maybe semester system of examination maybe uh, open book examination maybe online examination you will find that that is also equally discussed in this course then further the other objective is to use of various techniques and tools of evaluation so friends to make assessment a continuous process you will find that a single tool a single technique a single method is not enough this course will provide you a detailed understanding about what are the varieties of tools and techniques that can be used so far as different topic is concerned so far as different subject is concerned so far as different uh, types of content is concerned that a single tool is not enough many a time we can use a rating scale we can use a checklist we can use a sociometric technique we can use a questionnaire we can use a test so different types of test and tools that can be used okay so uh, this course will empower you empower, empower the learners to get an idea about varieties of tools techniques and how to develop the tools and techniques for using it in the school process so far as the assessment of students performance is concerned then further to prepare different tools for assessing learners performance i have already said that this is not only to understand about a tool rather you have to develop certain tool also you have to prepare certain tool also okay and you have to use that tool 
Further, the other objectives are uh, to use ICT for assessing performance of the learners. So, friends, uh, at the current time, at the present time, you must have observed that how uh, uh, how we the teachers are engaged in different online activities so far as teaching and learning process is concerned, so far as assessment is concerned. So what we are doing, you will find that uh, from 1st April 2020 onwards during this COVID-19 pandemic situation, you see all schools, uh, you know, you will find the teaching is going on online across the school. So what the teachers are doing, everyday teachers are teaching to the students and at the same time they are also by using different online assessment tool just like uh, you can say uh, Google Forms and other platform uh, they are developing assessment certain questionnaires certain tests and they are assessing performance of the learners. So that is why use of ICT use of ICTs nowadays is very important as a teacher you should you should well acquainted to use different ICT tools so far as teaching learning process is concerned and so far as assessment is concerned. So friends, this course will help you further to understand and to use different ICT tools. This has been elaborately discussed with examples. Then to understand the application of various statistical techniques or methods in assessing learners performance. So friends, uh, when we concern about assessment, it also equally focus upon that uh, uh, how to analyze the data, how to analyze the data of the performance. So you can only analyze by using different statistics, maybe by using the average statistics, by measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, correlation and other statistics also. So this course will help you to understand the basics of statistics and how to apply these statistics for interpreting, for analyzing students data. Okay. So this is also another objective. Then further this course will help you to compare and interpret performance of the learners quantitatively and qualitatively. So friends, this course how to how to uh, uh, you know perform assessment activities do the assessment activities quantitatively and qualitatively so that is also another important objective of this course so when you are using the statistics quantitatively we are analyzing the data and we are observing the performance of the learners what they really uh, able to do and uh, in which area in which aspect they are still uh, it requires certain rigorous involvement that is also qualitatively you can also assess the learners. So this is also another objective. So friends, beautifully this course has been developed keeping in consideration of the objectives uh, that I have already discussed. And uh, let me to, uh, you know, very briefly, uh, let me to say that uh, we use a very good program transaction uh, on, uh, methodology, okay, a dedicated program transaction methodology that is we provide self-learning material, we conduct induction program, we conduct course-wise academic counseling, then we conduct teleconferencing session in Ganderson TV. At the same time, we also conduct interactive radio counseling sessions, okay. And uh, uh, in Swayam Prabha, we also conduct sessions in Swayam Prabha channel. Uh, in I IRC session that is in FM radio, we developed many audio video programs which is available uh, in the YouTube, uh, YouTube platform, okay. Uh, and that is you will find it uh, in the uh, library in the library of EMPC you will find all the videos video programs are available and online also you will get it from the YouTube. Then further so far as the practical aspect is concerned we have uh, you know the uh, workshop based activities rigorous internship is also part of this program for developing skills among the learners. Then further assignment and term and examination so far as evaluation is concerned this is also another two important aspect one is the continuous assessment and other is the torment assessment so both types of assessment practices we conduct we, in, we have included for transacting this program then further just to focus upon uh, specifically for evaluation of different courses the two components that we follow one is the continuous assessment and other is the course wise uh, uh, other is the torment examination in continuous assessment we give 30 percent weightage to assignment and 70 per, in torment examination we give 70 percent weightage for the torment examination. So friends at least you have to earn a D grade in assignment in each course and a D grade at least in the torment examination of each course for successful completion of that component either assignment or torment examination. But uh, combining these two component at least you have to earn a C grade 
for successful completion of this course. Then further IGNU practice there is a 5 point grading system that is from grade A to E uh, like A is the highest grade and E is the lowest grade. So at least you required a C grade for successful completion of a course. Then friends uh, 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 for further queries as I have coordinated this course if you have any queries queries relating to this course you can you can write me in my mail id that is niradhar at the rate ignu.ac.in you can also make me a telephone call on 011-2957-2994 my intercom number is 2994 you can also visit my facebook page you will get many videos which is which is related to your program and related to other themes of education you can also visit my youtube channel you will also get many videos on education theme so friends uh, we discuss in this course, uh, uh, in this program, we discuss about the objectives of this course BES 1 to 7 that is assessment for learning and in the second program today we will discuss about the course design, what are the different blocks are there and in every blocks what are the units are there and what are the content points that has been addressed that has been included in different units. Thank you.